I've went ahead and created a Unity project and set up this very simple scene. It has some physics objects, it has a floor, and has a capsule. This capsule is eventually going to become our character. There's a link in the description of this video to another video that will actually show you how to set up your Unity project and reach this point that we're at here. Also go over some basics of Unity and how to use it. I'm gonna press play just so you can see what this looks like. We have physics objects attached to these cubes, so they should fall. Nice little animation there. I'm gonna head down to my assets tab, right click, create, C sharp script. We're gonna call this movement. This is gonna be the script that control that listens to the player's input and moves the character. We're gonna double click this script, open it in Visual Studio. And here is your basic Unity script. We have start, which is called on start, and we have update, which is called every frame. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new variable here. We're gonna make it a float and call it move speed, give it a default value of four. We're gonna click our capsule, which is eventually gonna be our player and add the movement script. As you can see, we've got our move speed, which can be modified inside the inspector here. So the first thing we wanna do is detect player's input. How do we see if a player is pressing any keys and if the character needs to move? Well, we wanna do this in the update loop, which is called every frame. So every frame you wanna check if the player is pressing any keys. To do that in Unity, we will use Input .get axis raw, and we will check it twice, once for horizontal, which can be your AAD left and right, and input .get axis raw vertical, which can be your back and forward, uh, W and S. We'll actually assign these to variables. We'll do var horizontal movement is equal to this. We'll go var vertical movement is equal to this. We'll actually do side move and forward move. And then just to debug this, we're going to do debug.log, side move, side move, and then copy that, forward move, forward move, just so we can visualize this and make sure it's working. Head back over to Unity, let it refresh, click play. We've got our console window open. You can see side move and forward move are both zero because I'm not pressing anything. Now if I press D, you can see side move becomes one. I press A, side move becomes negative one, and the same for W and S. And now we want this input to translate to character movement. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna create a new vector three. Our move vector is equal to vector three. We're gonna call X axis is our side move. We don't wanna move on the Y axis because that would be up and down. And Z axis is our forward move. And we're actually gonna multiply this by our move speed variable. Okay, and then we're gonna reference our transform. We're gonna call transform.translate by the move vector. And see how that looks. Now you can see it's extremely fast. That's obviously not what we want. I pressed D and the character basically flew off the screen. Your initial reaction to why the character moves so fast is to reduce the movement speed by an incredible amount. So say we set it down to 0.01, hit play, we'll see how this looks. Now you can see it looks relatively normal, or it might be a little bit jittery, but there is still another problem here that needs to be addressed. If I go back to my script and I set the application.target frame rate to 10, go back to the game, hit play, you can see that the movement speed is actually inconsistent with what it was before. Now that the frame rate is 10, the character moves extremely slow, and we do not want to be dependent on the frame rate like this. So how do we solve this? We want our movement translation to be relative to how much time passes each frame. And with Unity, we can reference that number with time.delta time. Delta time is simply the time it takes to execute each frame. It's not a consistent number because your frame rate is up and down. Delta time is also up and down. Now, all we have to do to fix our movement is multiply the move vector by delta time. So I'm gonna leave the target frame rate at 10 just to prove this. We're gonna go back to Unity. We're gonna set our move speed back to four we're gonna press play and see how this looks. Now if I press D, you can see he moves at a normal speed. And now just to prove that this is working, we're gonna go back to our script, set the application target frame rate to 120, which is significantly higher than 10, of course, obviously. We're gonna press play. You can see that the character still moves at the exact same speed. So now we are frame rate independent. Delta time and achieving frame rate independence is definitely knowledge that you wanna tuck away and hold on to because it's something that we will need when we start creating mods and game modes in Sandbox as well.
The next thing I'm gonna do is make the camera move with the character. And to do this, I'm basically just gonna make the camera a child of the capsule and position it to a decent position right above his head where the eyes would be roughly. Press play and see how that looks. So now we are one with the capsule. But if I move my mouse, he does not look around. So we're gonna add this next. And the way we do this is actually very similar to how we handled movement. First we're gonna do create a new variable called mouse sensitivity and we'll set it to one. We're gonna scroll down to our update method and we're gonna grab two values from input.getAccessRaw var mouse x is equal to input.getAccessRaw mouse x and do the same for mouse y. And then we're gonna grab our current camera's rotation. We're gonna do this with for rotation is equal to camera dot main dot transform dot Euler angles. So if we go back to unity and select any game object, look at the rotation gizmo by clicking this rotation handle up here, you can see that the X axis, which is red, handles our pitch. The X is pitch and the green axis, which is Y handles our yaw. So pitch is handled by the mouse Y and yaw is handled by the mouse X. If you look at my cursor, this is mouse Y, this is mouse X. So we go back to our script. We have to create a new vector var rotation vector is equal to new vector three. And our pitch would be mouse Y, our yaw would be mouse X, and pass in zero for the Z axis. And now we can do rotation plus equal to rotation vector times mouse sensitivity. And then we do camera.main transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler rotation convert that back to a quaternion because that is the rotation type now if we go back to unity and press play see how this looks look left and right and see that that works but if we look up and down you can see that that is actually backwards and this is a simple fix back to our script mouse y set this to negative now you can see that everything looks and works properly. The only thing we're missing now is if we look around, it doesn't reflect on our movement vector. So if I look backwards and I press forwards, we're still gonna move forwards. Unity provides a method that makes it very easy to fix this problem. We'll set move vector is equal to camera dot main dot transform dot transform direction move vector. And now the move vector has been transformed to be relative to the direction we are looking. There is one more problem with this solution, but I'm gonna show it to you in game. Take a look around. Now you can see if we look, we move around according to the direction we're looking. But the problem is we didn't account for up and down if we're looking up and down. So now you can actually fly. The simplest solution to this problem is to take our move vector and set the Y axis to zero. Go back to game. And we're actually gonna do one more thing here. We want our character to properly interact with the physics objects in the scene. So we're gonna add it the rigid body component, but we don't want our character to be manipulated by the gravity and physics itself. So we're gonna turn this is kinematic to true. Now we're gonna press play and see how this looks. Okay, we can move around, we can look around, everything is good. Now, if we touch these physics objects, you can see they are manipulated by the character controller itself. And uh, yeah, that's basically wraps up this video. This project that I'm using to create this tutorial series is going to be published to GitHub. It's gonna be public. There's a link to it in the description of this video. So if you wanna follow along, the code is right there, nice and easy. I hope you guys stay tuned for future videos. We are recreating Gary's Mod in Unity. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.